All right, everyone, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a coloring style or rendering style, I guess you could call it, called Cut and Grad. Uh, it's what I use most of the time. I don't know that I've really explained it completely for anyone that's just joined the channel. So Cut and Grad, the, the term comes from a time a long time ago when the only way that you could get uh, fades in Photoshop was with the gradient tool. You just didn't have a whole lot of options otherwise. So I'll show you what I mean. So if you've got a box here and I switch to the gradient tool, it's basically a fade. Okay, So it lets you create uh, fades in Photoshop. And that used to be the only way you could do it. But now with modern technology, you can get soft brushes and sort of accomplish the same thing. Even depending on how much memory you have, even really big brushes, you know. So, um, so that's usually the uh, best way to do that. Although you can use the gradient tool. Some of my old videos, one of my first videos, the Avenging Spider-Man one, uh, I think I used the gradient tool almost exclusively. <laughs> that's what I used to do. Uh, I like having the control of a brush a little bit better. So we'll jump right in here on her face. So she's in the coffee shop. She's lit from the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the areas where the light's going to hit. Uh, that's oversimplification of what, of what you're doing, but that's really kind of what you're doing here. So and I usually do this in sections. So I'm going to leave room under her hair here for you know the shadow from from that, and sort of follow her line of her nose. And that's kind of one one plane there. And then you've got another plane, and this, I'm not going to get into all of the uh, anatomy here. <laughs> that's, a, that's another lesson for another day. But at this angle, you're going to get something like this, basically. And so I'm going to hide that and go grab a color here, orangey color using the soft brush and using kind of the edge of the brush if, if I got right in the middle of this area everything would I'm going to change this to screen mode let's see oh, I'm in the wrong totally wrong layer sorry yeah there we go so if I get right in the middle in, in color you can see it's everything's kind of one color and that's not really what I want I want to use the edge of the brush to give it a little bit more uh, subtlety here and I can uh, change that brush and make it a little bit smaller. I'm actually going to get out of screen mode on my brush and use uh, normal sort of like the control you get a little bit better. And also usually it takes a uh, little trial and error with skin especially. So anyway, filling this in here And I really don't necessarily want this hard of an edge over here, but I can fix that in a second over here on her cheek here. And so, like, that's your first pass, basically. And now I can go in and add, you know, sharper highlights in along other areas here. And again, kind of deciding where these lights are does take some practice. Um... And I'm still on the wrong layer somehow. I got too many layers over here. There we go. Better. All right. So trace this again. Nose is going to get it there. And then I'm going to go a little lighter and a little bit yellower and same thing again alright so that actually works pretty well I like that um, another sort of bonus tip here and actually I wanted to fix this so I'm just going to grab this color here 
again, I'm in normal mode. I'm just gonna sort of fade this in. Maybe not quite that much. Get rid of that hard edge there. So yeah. But another trick, and this is getting a little, probably a little advanced. I'm not gonna go into all of the detail on why this is this way. But uh, with skin, there's something called subsurface scattering. Google that, subsurface scattering in skin. When you, when you put a flashlight through your fingers, you know, when your fingers are closed and you get that red glow, skin actually does that along the edges of where the shadows meet the, um, where the shadows meet the light. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go over this one more time. Your nose is not quite dark enough or bright enough. Yeah, that's better. So anyway, subsurface scattering. What I'm going to do is where these edges are, I want to saturate it. So I'm going to get a more saturated and a little bit red. And again, this is sort of a trial and error type thing. And I'm just in uh, normal mode with a chalk brush here. And that's too dark. It's pretty close. So right along these edges, just a little bit. Uh, it's too dark still. Again, trial and error. Don't be afraid to screw up. If you screw up, then just do it over again. I'm gonna keep this pretty subtle. I mean, nothing too crazy. Yeah. So, you know, it depends on the page. Sometimes I've got a lot of time to go in and add some little subtle things like this. Of course, when you zoom out, it, you're not really, uh, it's not quite as obvious, but anyway, sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I won't. And here is a good example of when to do it. So I figured why not? So what else here? So we've covered the light on her face here from the top. One other thing I'm going to do in this panel, her laptop's on here. So now the light from the laptop, if we think about it, is not really going to overpower any of this light from the ceiling. It's so much brighter. So I'm going to grab a bluish color. And again, I'm sort of guessing at first. And I'm going to grab all of the, the other color, like this, the base color that I didn't really change. Show you what I mean here. See what I mean? So I'm in the, the shadow here. And again, soft brush, and I can just sort of brush that just a little bit. Again, pretty subtle here. I'm not really trying to get a little bit brighter, a little bit like that. You know, so really, really subtle. You would see it more down here or on her arm, that kind of thing, maybe. You can see a little bit I've got on her in front of her uh, chest here. But that's sort of how cut and grad works. And this stuff doesn't happen overnight as far as, I mean, granted, I'm not the greatest colors in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but um, even to get decent at this, it takes a lot of practice. Planes of the face, especially, um, is a very complex uh, thing. So if you're not confident in where your, um, you know, where your uh, cuts should be, you know, uh, find some reference. Um, there's actually a Actually, let me see if I can find it, and I will show you what I mean. Give me one second here. All right, so this is a what they call a light cage. Let me see if I can get this all to fit here. I actually cropped the screen more than usual. But you should be able to see that. So we've got this uh, young lady here, and you see all of these uh, little bowl-looking things. Those, these are lights, okay? And everywhere I move it, you can see it's actually changing where the light is hitting her face. So if it's like dead on in the front, there you go, from the left side, right side. So when you get a situation like this, you know, for example, 
this is probably the closest thing we've got, you know, somewhere between here and here. Probably the closest approximation we have to that particular panel. So if you're ever curious about where those lines should be, you know, look at look at this, sort of squint a little bit and see, okay, well, it's kind of tracing down through here, and it's going that way, and then it's following mm -hmm. your chin. So you don't have to just guess at it. You've got a great resource there to uh, uh, to reference. So and reference is not cheating. Reference is required, I would say, if you're going to be a good artist. So so anyway, uh, that's Cut and Grind. Thank you all so much for listening. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want more in depth uh, lectures or lessons or tutorials or whatever you want to call it, um, I do have a coloring course. I'll put a link at the at the uh, end of the video and also in the description down there. You can check it out at cometcolor.com slash learn. And I go into all the specifics on all the different aspects of coloring step by step from flatting to rendering and special effects and textures and pretty much everything I could think of. Uh, someone asked me about an advanced course, one of the students, and uh, I was like, I have to figure out what to do with it. I put so much stuff in it. Uh, that sounds like a salesman talking, but really, I, I put almost everything that I uh, know about coloring uh, into this course, and uh, everything else I'm, you know, throwing on YouTube here in small chunks for you. So, so anyway, if you enjoy this this channel, um, please uh, subscribe and uh, lose, use the uh, like button there at the bottom uh, to uh, give me the thumbs up here on the video. So, so thanks again for watching, and we'll talk soon.